Let's take a look at personas in Affinity Photo for iPad. The personas are going to be up top here. And what the persona is, is it's going to switch. It might confuse you a little bit if you're coming from Photoshop or something like that. But for the most part, it's, it's very easy. And when you switch personas, uh, you're going to notice most notably that your tools are going to change as we click back from the draw to the selection persona. You can see a couple differences in the tools, but also the menu system is gonna change a little bit. And as you can see, there's different things and everything here. So basically what Affinity likes to do is separate some of the, the bigger things into just their own personas. That way you have more flexibility to do what you wanna do in those personas. And it works very well. Now, the draw persona is going to be the main persona that you're, you're using the majority of the time. However, the selection persona, which is the second one over, is also going to be used a lot too. And this one, instead of just having, like in other applications where you just kind of have your selection tools, having a whole persona helps out quite a bit because right now, um, and at any point, just real quick, if you ever click the little question mark in the corner, it's going to show you everything and uh, just the names for everything. We're going to right now go to the flood selection tool, which is similar to the magic wand in Photoshop. We're going to go to our layers really quick and make sure we're on the uh, the affinity layer, which has been rasterized real quick. I just want to say um, once we get into the text stuff, I'm going to show you this, but um, uh, you can't just select text. It's got to be rasterized, which this is. So we're going to select... Uh, this and as you can see uh, down here uh, every tool that you click on has different um, editable features that come up so here we're on new and as we click new it's selecting one at a time what we want so then we're going to go to add and now we can select this entire selection here then we can go to the grow shrink tool and we can just take our pen and grow it down here. Uh, we could also have tapped in here. Let's tap in here and just hit eight. And then there you go. So now that we have a selection uh, that we'd like, we want to hit the check mark here just to make sure, tell it, yes, this is what we like. And now we can go back to the draw persona and, um, I'm sorry, the photo persona in Affinity Photo. And uh, now we still have that selection. So we can still now use these tools with what we did in the other persona. So let's go ahead and make a new layer. And we're gonna drop that layer underneath the text. And we're just gonna go in with the uh, flood fill tool. And we're gonna pick a color. Let's pick like kind of a purplish here. And as you can see, um, it's a good way to go back and forth between personas. And that's kind of what the workflow is. Now, as I mentioned here, because now we're in the photo persona, we have different menus as well. So we do need to go back over to the uh, selection persona to hit the deselect to get rid of that. So let's just take a quick look at some of the other personas that Affinity Photo for iPad have, uh, even though these will be the two main ones. But there is also, let's uh, go down to this iPad here and go into the liquify persona. And now that we're on the layer with the iPad, uh, now we can like liquify it. And liquify, again, has a lot of different tools, its own menus. Um, and I think everybody's pretty familiar with what liquify is. And if you're not, you can kind of see right here what we can do with it. Um, you would basically liquify something and then uh, you would go back to the view tool to apply it and say, yep, that's what I wanted. And there you go. Um, the next persona that we're going to go to and take a look at is the develop persona. And the develop persona is... It has a lot of your color options and you can uh, select the exposure, you know, the vibrance, change the white balance and stuff like that. But you can do it per 
as you can see, we're on just the iPad layer. So it's only affecting the iPad. Um, but you could you could do this to the full document, and I'm going to show you some some other tricks and stuff like that. Uh, same way, if you like your changes, you click the check marks and develop it. And then tone mapping, which probably is going to be the least used uh, persona for you. Um, it deals a lot with like HDR images and stuff. So unless you're specifically looking to do HDR imaging. Uh, then you're probably not going to use this. And like I say, the photo persona and the selection persona are going to be the two main ones. So we're going to be focusing on them through this beginner's guide. Uh, now, in the next video, we're going to take a look at the tools and then we're going to go over to the left side. And you guys should have a really good grasp and then we're going to get into some projects.